Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Spanish Tapas class. Uh, this is one of many cooking classes that we are doing from now until March of 2022. 2022, yeah. And the point is to raise awareness of specialty crops, which are grown around the county by our local farmers here in Solano County. And specialty crops are essentially things that we eat. It's vegetables, fruits, tree nuts, and culinary herbs. There's also some flowers and some nursery products in that group, uh, but we are focusing on the edibles. And so I'm really happy today to share a couple of recipes with you. As some of you know, I was hoping to do a Papa's Bravas, which is roasted potatoes, but my oven back here is, uh, I'm having a hard time finding a service person <laughs> to come and, and take a look at my oven. So I switched it to a gazpacho andaluz, and also we are gonna do a romesco sauce, which is definitely one of my favorite sauces in the Spanish tapas world. Um, these recipes I just kind of found and you know adjusted them a little bit. I've been to Spain a number of times. Um, the Basque region is amazing. If any of you, if we any of us get to fly anywhere, um, I highly recommend if you're, you have a trip to Spain planned, go to the Basque region. It has some of the most amazing food and some amazing chefs. Um, you'll find a little more traditional kind of Spanish tapas in Barcelona and also in Madrid. Um, but it does kind of vary from region to region. So, so anyway, uh, today we are doing the two recipes, the gazpacho and the romesco sauce. And I'll have Allison share the recipes really quick with both of you, us, both of you, all of you, both recipes with all of you. My brain is not talking well today. Okay, here's the gazpacho. So this might look a little confusing when you first see it. Um, again, these recipes are available on our website, sustainablesolano.org, and you can find them through the local food page. So there's a few different parts here. Um, there's a garnish section, which is the first section, and then there's like a soup part one and a soup part two. So the garnish ingredients I'm going to do first because I'm going to, uh, I want to salt them and then let the uh, juices come out of those vegetables and then I want to use that juice in the soup and then I also have the garnishes you know after the, ju the juices have come out the garnishes are a little bit drier and you know easier for sprinkling on top when you're done um, so that's kind of what that first section is and then the second one we're just going to rough chop all of that that is the core of our soup which you know has all the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the peppers and all of the vegetables that really add the flavor and then part three, or part two, sorry, soup part two, are kind of the extra things that get combined to create a certain effect in the gazpacho. So there are, um, there's some bread, there's sherry vinegar and olive oil, and we'll complete the whole thing with those parts of the soup in a blender toward the end. Okay, so thank you, Allison, that's the gazpacho. And then the other one that we're doing today is a romesco sauce. I love this recipe on just about anything. It's great on fish, it's great on shrimp. I would put it on like grilled, you know, summer squash, you know, you're, you're, the options are endless. So there's a couple things that I've already done for this romesco sauce recipe. There is a guajillo chili, which is a little bit not traditional, but I really like it in this recipe. So I use the dried guajillo chili and I'll show you what I have done once I kind of walk through the, the recipe here. Um, I've soaked that in a chicken stock and red wine vinegar mixture. And I see that I forgot to make a little edit. I'm gonna revise this. We really don't need, you don't need a whole two cups of chicken stock and a whole one cup of red wine vinegar. You can do half of that. So I did one cup of chicken stock and a half of a cup of red wine vinegar. If you are vegetarian and you do not wanna use the chicken stock, no worries, just substitute that with water. Um, you know, the chicken stock for me, it just adds a little bit extra flavor in the end and, and you have a liquid that you can add if you need it. Um, but you can definitely just substitute water for the stock. So I've already done that step and I'll show you that in a minute. And then the other step that I've done on this, uh, there's two other things. I've toasted my almonds in a saute pan, which I will show you shortly. And then I also roasted my red peppers on my range top flame. You can also do these in the oven if your oven's working. <laughs> you could also do it on your grill. So there's lots of options for roasting your red peppers, and I'll kind of walk you through those two once we get to those steps. So, okay, thank you, Allison. That's the recipes. And again, they're on sustainablesolano.org through the local food page. Okay, so let's go back to our gazpacho. I want to, I'm gonna start with the gazpacho, and I'm gonna kind of let this sit, my garnish mixture will sit for a little while. 
And then um, I may just kind of hop over to the Romesco sauce and, um, and then we'll come back to the gazpacho. We'll see, I'll, I'll kind of wing it as I go here. I'm kind of used to multitasking. <laughs> so what I've added uh, for my garnishes, I'm gonna put them in this big strainer. I usually use a smaller one, but it's in my dishwasher right now. So I have a, a colander set over a pan to catch my juices because I wanna have the juices extract from these vegetables. So I've got my uh, half of a green bell pepper in there. And next I'm gonna put in a half of a cucumber. So I gave it a rough peel on the outside and then I'm just gonna take the seeds out using a spoon. I just scrape the seeds straight down. I have a little composting bucket thing here on the side. Okay. And then I'm just gonna, you know, put this into some kind of dice that I might wanna use as my garnish. So I'm gonna make long strips on my cucumber. This is a pretty large cucumber. If you have a smaller one, that would be fine too. Okay, so I just wanna make my, my kind of like cucumber sticks here. And then I'm gonna just go crosswise. And for those of you who are new, I usually try to do a little bit of knife skills talk in my classes. So you'll see that my left hand is kind of like, like a little crab crawling on the beach. And the reason I'm doing that is because my blade will then hit my knuckles as I'm cutting and not chop off my fingertips. So we're going to do quite a few knife skill things here today because there's a lot of chopping going on. Okay, the next thing I'm putting in is um, the recipe says half of a small red onion. I have some really tiny red onions, so I'm just going to put the whole thing in here, this little tiny guy. So I've just halved it, and I'm going to put the uh, the root end is on my left, and we'll get to do more onion in a second here. So then I kind of change the position of the, the onion. I'll, I'll kind of walk through a little bit more in the second half here. Okay, there's my minced onion. Okay, so you'll see this a couple times today. My root end is on the left, I'm right-handed. So the, the cut part of the, um, the top is on the right side. And I have my palm here and I'm gonna give this a couple little cuts, but I'm not gonna go all the way through to the root end. I'm just gonna go up till it kind of just about gets to the end. I'm gonna stop at that point. And then I'm gonna turn it so that the root end is on top and I'm gonna swipe slices straight down. And again, I'm not going all the way through to the root because the root is gonna hold all these layers together until my final cut, which is the third step here. So now I position it to the original position. The root is on the, my left and then I go straight down. And if you've made the same size cut in every direction, then you have a nice evenly diced onion. Okay, so there's my onion. All right, so we've got the cucumber, the pepper. Yep, okay, last but not least is the tomatoes. And so I have a couple colors here. And these I can feel are quite juicy. So I'm just gonna get the core out of one. And let's see here. I'm gonna do wedges, I think, for these. And there is already a bunch of juice coming out of here. So that's good news. I'm gonna put that juice into the colander. It'll likely go right through. Onion is kind of making me cry. Um, so these two tomatoes are one pound, and then we have another two pounds, which are going to go into the main soup in ingredients. So in case you want to go by weight, because, you know, tomatoes are all different sizes, and the heirlooms especially are not only different sizes, but different shapes. Okay, one more tomato here. These are some heirloom tomatoes that came in my CSA box. By the way, I did get um, a little note from Terra Firma. They are now ready to start taking more CSA subscribers. So if any of you have been wanting to get some farm fresh produce, um, you can check them out. It's T-E-R-R-A-F-I-R-M-A, -R -R Terra Firma. They are a great organic farm by Winters. And they also have some land in Solano County. And I've been subscribing to their CSA boxes for 
oh boy, probably at least six or seven years. And um, you just get what they are growing. So everything is very seasonal. However, if you live in the southern end of the county, you definitely get some produce that is, you know, normally what you might get um, later because they're up, you know, by winters it's warmer up there. So you'll get tomatoes sooner than the tomatoes that you might be growing in your own garden. All right, here's my last batch of that. All right, there's the tomatoes. So now to this mixture, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle that around. And I'm gonna give this a little stir. And then we're gonna wait for the juices to kind of come out and drain into the pan. Okay. All right, it's already starting. I'm gonna set this over here because I've got multiple things going on. So there's my garnish stuff. Um, okay, so that needs to sit for about half an hour or so. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll come back. Um, the, the rest of the gazpacho is pretty fast to put together because a lot of the rest of this will just um, rough chop. You know, and I'm going to go ahead and get, sorry, you hear all these noises. I mean, while I'm cutting tomatoes, I'm going to go ahead and chop up, look at this big guy, <laughs> a massive heirloom thing. So these are my other two pounds of tomatoes that are going to go, going to go into the gazpacho. So for this, this is going to go into the blender, so it doesn't really matter how we cut this up. It has a massive core. Get that out of there. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get this broken down. It looks like a watermelon inside this tomato. It's got like a green, green skin and red interior. And then I'll kind of dry this off. This is one meaty tomato. Okay, but that is what's going to make it super good. <clears throat> um, so I talked about terra firma. Another CSA, and I believe they are now pulling people off the wait list too, is Eat Well. Um, they're a farm in Dixon. And it's just eatwell.com, I think. Um, and you can do boxes every week or every other week from Eat Well. And they also have um, opportunities for add-ons. The owner, Lorraine, kind of goes out of her way to find products from around the county um, so that other small businesses can kind of get paired up. She's got relationships with some flour millers and some fruit purveyors, and she's even getting some tofu from a place in Oakland, I think. So that's another one. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to check out um, Wilkinson Acres. Uh, Allison, I sent a link. So Wilkinson is a relatively new farm, new meaning within the last two or three years. And um, they're a great couple. Mike and Courtney own the farm. And they are really trying to farm very sustainably and responsibly and build their soil, which is very admirable. And they just started having some open farm stand days on Saturdays. So I'm going to go check it out tomorrow morning. I believe they're doing it from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So if anybody's around. Um, okay, so I'm rough chopping all of these soup part one. So I got my two pounds of tomatoes. The other half of my cucumber is here. I just did the half of the green bell pepper. And I'm going to do another onion. So I'll show you that. Another couple of things that are going in there is a serrano pepper. I did not have a serrano, but I had a... Um, jalapeno. So I'm just going to do like half of this jalapeno and we'll add that to the mix. And I would say the jalapeno is optional. You know, I kind of like it to add a little bit of heat here, but it's, you know, entirely up to you. So we'll throw that in. There goes the pepper. Here comes the cucumber. Okay. Will it all fit in the bowl is the question. Um, another pepper I just wanted to point out, these are growing right now. They're called gypsy peppers. If I hold it up and we can see it a little better. And they look really, they're kind of a light yellow. They taste a lot like a green bell pepper. So if you happen to have these or can find these, 
You can easily substitute these for your green bell pepper. All right, if you mix the onion the first time around, here it is again. So I cut off my top and I just shaved my root end a little bit so that I don't have dirt. And then I cut it straight through so that I have two halves. And now what I also have is a corner, which makes it easier to peel the peeling off. Okay, so there's one half and here's the other half. And actually, I don't really have to mince these up very fancy. I just need to kind of chop them. But I'll show you the, the proper way to cut the onion on half of it and then move on to the other one. So again, I have my palm here. I do a little slice. I only have room for about two slices because this is such a tiny onion. And then I turn it so the root's on top. And I go through and I cut straight down to the cutting board, but I don't go through to the root and I turn it to the original position and go straight down. Okay, so there's that. And for this, I'm just gonna give it a couple of swipes there. Cut across. Okay. okay, so there's my main soup part, which will hang out over here with my other ingredients. Uh, let's see, you know, I may as well finish up these other things. Um, the only other thing really to, oh, I need two garlic cloves. Yeah, okay, so we'll do those two. That one's a little small. I like garlic, let's put in three. Okay. And so for these, since it's going into the blender, I'm just gonna get the, the peels off and give it a little smash so that it breaks down and combine it in with my other vegetables. All right, one more. Okay, even my garlic came from a farm that's also from terra firma. Okay, and this is my favorite little tool, my bench scraper, otherwise known as a pastry scraper. Good for scooping all these little things off of the cutting board. All right, now I just realized I need to go grab the saute pan, which goes on this induction burner. It needs a special kind of a pan. So um, hold on, I'll be right back in the other room. You might hear some banging and twanging. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, so yeah, the, with the induction burner, this has like a magnetic thing in the bottom, so it only works with certain kinds of pans. Uh, okay, so let's jump over to our Romesco sauce, and I'll kind of walk through those other steps that I did earlier before the class. And then we'll do our Romesco sauce, and then come back to the gazpacho. different things here to show you. Let me grab the chili. Okay, I think this is cooled down enough. I can set it up here. <clears throat> on a towel over here. Okay, so this liquid that I'm gonna stash back here behind my sink is the stock and vinegar concoction mixture that I put my guajillo uh, chili in. So here's the guajillo chilies. It's just your basic dried chili that you can find at most supermarkets and Mexican markets. Um, these are not super spicy. They're kind of like, you know, maybe a little hotter than a poblano. Um, maybe not quite as hot as a uh, jalapeno. And so they come dried. So I used about one and a half of these. If you have a really large one, you might just put in one. And all I did was I took the top off and then I split it open and you can hear there's some seeds in there. 
So I just took the seeds out and took the top off and kind of ripped it in half and stuck it in my pan with the stock and the vinegar and then cooked it for about half an hour or so. Um, you know, if you forget about it and leave it on there for longer, no worries. It's, it's really not a big deal. So you just want to get it so to the point where it's really pliable and flexible. So it's, um, it's really soft now. And I have the extra liquid, which if I need it for my romesco sauce, I can add that in kind of toward the end to add some flavor if, if needed. So that's all I did with the guajillo chili. So that's that part. Um, the, what else here? We have a couple more tomatoes, which I will chop up. Oh, the almonds. Okay, so here's the almonds. I, they go into a dry pan on like low to medium uh, heat. And you wanna just make sure to kind of stir them around every once in a while. Um, you can also do this in the oven. My preferred method would be in the oven. They toast a little more evenly, but this also works. So I just want a light golden brown on my almonds. These are sliced almonds. You could also use slivered almonds. Um, even if you had whole almonds or whole blanched, you could chop them up and then do this toasting routine, either in the pan or in the oven. Okay, so there's my almonds. I'll throw that back over there. Um, and then the other thing was the red peppers. So you definitely have some options there, like I discussed earlier. You can do the oven. If you want to do it in the oven, I recommend putting them on a sheet pan, like so. I would rub a little bit of oil all over my red pepper and stick it on here. Cook it at about 400 degrees-ish until it starts to blacken. For today, what I did is I just stuck it on my range top burner. So I was over here with the burner on, I have a gas range, and I was just kind of turning it from time to time until I got you know, a nice blackened pepper kind of all over, okay? And I have three of those. So they'll get blackened and they'll start to get kind of mushy. And when I uh, chop, cut these apart, there'll be lots of juice that comes out. So also what I wanna do is, you know, I wanted to kind of pull some of the skin off. So that's sort of the point. So after you've toasted them, you take them out. If it was on the oven, I would have taken them off of the sheet pan and stick them in a bowl. And then I covered it with saran wrap and let them steam. And so what the steaming does is it allows you to then pull the skin off. Now, it's not all going to come off and that's okay. Um, you'll have a little extra smoky flavor mixed in there, but this is kind of how you would normally do your roasted pepper. So there it is, I'm just gonna pull that off. I'm gonna have to do this over some water because it's sticking all over. Oh, there I got some. Okay, so there's my first one. Um, I don't want to try to rinse too much with water because a lot of the flavor is right here, you know, after the, the toasting part. All right, this one's going to come right off because it was a little more blackened. I kind of had varying degrees of toasting over there on my range. Okay, all right. It's mostly to get it off my hands. <clears throat> All right, there's pepper number two. I think the skin came all the way off of that one. And then here's number three, which was a little bit smaller. And this recipe, it says like two to three peppers. So if you only have two, that's fine. I really love peppers, so I'm gonna, I decided to do all three of them. All right, there's that one. Okay. So that's what I did ahead of time. If you're doing this, you know, you can definitely do all of these advanced steps many days in, you know, in advance. Well, not so much for the peppers. I'd say, you know, one or two days in advance on the peppers. But the nuts, what I tend to do is toast nuts in large batches and then put it in some kind of freezer safe container or Ziploc bag and then throw it in the freezer. And then I have it at my disposal for whatever I need. I use them, you know, for salads or whatever purpose I'm doing. Um, okay. So then, also on this recipe are tomatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, chop these up. Romas work fine. Again, I've got some beautiful heirlooms. So I'm just gonna chop these up 
really quick. And then we're going to do some frying of bread, which is part of the romesco sauce. If you are gluten intolerant, you can use gluten free bread, no problem. If you do not have bread on hand, but you happen to have bread crumbs, that also works. I'm just going to load my tomatoes up in here. This is the equivalent of about two large. I had another little extra one here and thought, why not throw it in? Four. So again, I'm just rough chopping these. We're going to cook the tomatoes and we're going to cook the, the, kind of like fry the bread, shallow fry the bread. And then it all goes into a blender. Okay, Allison, are there any questions so far? Well, I can answer while I'm chopping away here. Um, yeah, we did get a couple of questions. Um, one on, um, actually, I'll, I'll leave one for later because it's a, on a later process with the gazpacho. Um, but okay. there was a question about if there are any alternatives or substitutes for the guajillo chili. Um, we, that question is actually coming from somebody in Australia, so oh. I, I don't know if, if uh, <laughs> yeah, there might be some peppers that are a little more a little hard um, to get. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is a good question. Let me think about that. Um, you know, an Anaheim, I think, would work fine. Those are also kind of in that medium to mild range. Um, and, you know, the guajillo chili, I would say it's, you know, it's not essential. What you could substitute is maybe some smoked paprika, some smoky hot paprika. Um, and typically in Spain, it's used a lot. Um, I actually, you know, if you can find Spanish paprika, that would be a really good thing to put in. And you just, I would say, just add it to taste. Um, you know, if you ha can't find the dried chili. Uh, yeah, so I think that would be my first choice. Forget about the Anaheim, like I just said. <laughs> but maybe if that's available, you could use that too. But I, I think, you know, you really want the smokiness from, from like the, the smoked paprika. I think that would be really good. So yeah. Okay, Any, anything else? I'm just kind of trying to get all these seeds out of these peppers. Um, I don't know if we have a few. Someone else is seal. suggesting an alternative might be chilies in canned adobo sauce. Would that work? Mm, the the chilies, the ch chipotle chilies, definitely have a very distinct flavor, which is a little more Mexican than Spain, Spanish Spain. Um, that could work. I would go easy on it though, and, and you will have kind of a different flavor profile with that. But yeah, I mean that does have that similar smoky flavor. Um, a little bit goes a long way. So try it. Just you know, a little bit at a time and taste as you go would be my recommendation. So, oh, I have one more pepper. I thought I was done. Nope, one more. Okay, and I'm trying to save the juice. I'm trying to just get the seeds out, but I want this bell pepper juice in my mixture here. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can strain the juice into the bowl and then ditch the seeds there. Okay. Okay, so you know what I should do is I'm going to heat, start heating up my oil in my big saute pan. <clears throat> Set these aside. Okay, so we need quite a bit of olive oil on this recipe. Um, it could be as much as a cup. And since I am cooking this olive oil first, I'm going to dry one of these. I'm just going to use kind of a basic supermarket olive oil. I'm going to use a uh, higher quality olive oil toward the end after we do the cooking and we're just doing the blending. Same with the gazpacho. I'm going to use a local olive oil that is um, actually from Spanish mission trees and 
you know, a little more expensive oil, so I don't want to cook it and, you know, it, cause it'll degrade once it hits the heat in the pan. So, <clears throat> so this is about half a cup of olive oil going into here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fry my bread. So I just have some slices of a baguette right here. I've got about, these are a little small, so I opted for five slices. So I'm just going to put those here on standby. Um, and then we'll pull that out. And then we're going to add the tomato to the pan. And just wait for the, the tomato to soften a little bit. And then we will complete with everything into the blender. So here's my peppers. All right, let me make sure I have everything ready here. So we've got the guajillo chilies done, olive oil's in the works, the bread is here, the tomatoes are chopped up, the almonds are ready, the red peppers are here. Oh yeah, we need garlic. So six to eight cloves of garlic. You know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in eight, right? Because <laughs> I like garlic. but I do not need to pre-chop these necessarily because they're gonna go into a blender. So, I'm gonna, that one's not releasing, there it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna get my tongs. Let's see if my, not quite ready. Put that right there and let it heat up. This induction burner is kind of funky. It has, um, it has a temperature like, 300, 400, 500 degrees, as opposed to like low, medium, high. And then it also has temperature in watts or something, which I don't pay attention to because I'm not, I have no idea how many watts is hot or medium or high, etc. So, and it heats up pretty fast. Um, while I'm doing this garlic, I heard a trick. I'm not sure if it entirely works, but I've heard that if you take the root part off, so in other words, you separate some of your cloves from the, the root end, or you, know, you can kind of do this where this breaks off, then it'll last longer. And it won't start to grow. That little green, little green section on the inside won't do that quite as fast. Let's see, I've lost track where I'm at here with the garlic. One, two, three, four, roughly five. After I mash it, by the way, I'm just chopping off the, the end that would be by the root, and that helps it to release from the little shell. My cloves. That one started coming apart. All right, I'm to clean up here. All right, let's see if our... There we go. I hear a little bit of a sizzle. That's what we want. So in goes my bread. You could also use bread crumbs if you want, but I kind of like this option with the, the baguette. For one thing, if you have old bread sitting around, it's a good use for that. Uh, so what I want to do on the bread is I'm going to look for, you know, just a golden, a golden color. garlic. And I'm going to do both sides of the bread too. Rinse this thing off. Not quite. Let me grab a pan. Use that pan that I had before. Once they're done, we'll stick them on here. All right. So while we're waiting for this to happen, I'm just going to grab my blender, a little extra oil, throw that in there. I'll get that set up. We have multiple appliances going on in this class, kind of like last time we were doing the taco toppers and same story. We've got like everything happening here. All right, let's see that. Goes to the computer. Oops. Oh, that's okay. It's all good. Okay.
All right. Almost working. Okay, that one. Oh, this is heating unevenly. Okay. So here's little toasted golden. I'm going to flip that one. I see we have a range. Oh, I think I know what's happening. It's, it's slanted a little bit. So where it's shallower, the heat is coming up a little faster. So that's where it's toasting a little bit more quickly. Good to know. Check them frequently here. And once the bread is done, we're going to save this oil. And I'm going to put the tomatoes into this pan. So we don't have to, you know, we're not redoing anything with the tomatoes. We're just going to throw it all together. Okay, that one's flipping. That one's ready. All right. They've all been flipped. Let's see how these two are doing. Not quite. Okay. So I don't know if you can hear the sizzling, but I, there's like, you know, a little sound. And there's bubbling going on around the hot oil around the bread and this baguette has a lot of holes in it so it's kind of coming up through the the holes in the baguette too i'm just going to keep checking it because you know what will happen is if i start doing something else this will burn all right that piece is almost ready to pull out okay <laughs> okay yep i'm just going to keep messing with this here all right, that one's good. That one's good. Two down, three to go. That one's almost there. There they are. They're like little, little crostinis. Okay, that one's coming out. And this oil is going to be super, super hot at this point. So I will probably turn this down just a tad before I stick my tomatoes in. Let's do that, sure. Okay, I think that's good on the bread. So I'm going to let those sit there and grab a wooden spoon of sorts. Okay, so then in go the tomatoes. This is going to be really loud. All right, so now, because that was so hot, this shouldn't take too long. What I'm looking for is the skins on the tomatoes are gonna just start to peel away and they're going to get, you know, softer. So I've kind of cranked it back up. The cold tomatoes have um, taken the temperature of my oil down. So we're just gonna wait for this to heat back up a little bit. And then once the tomatoes are soft, then we are pretty much ready to assemble this in the blender. So I'm going to go ahead and start loading a few things in. Let me do the peppers. There's my three roasted red peppers and you definitely want to have all the juice that accumulated from your peppers. Here's the garlic. Let's see here. Is there anything else I need to cook? I don't think so. I haven't done this in a while. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the chilies. Um, we'll do it in order here. The chilies, the fried bread will go in next, the tomatoes, and we'll, we're going to add all the cooking oil from this pan into the blender as well. <clears throat> oh, I know. We need the almonds over here. Garlic. I'll probably put the almonds in toward the top because I want the juicy stuff to be at the bottom. It'll help it mix and, and, and be able to pull. The, the blender will, you know, be able to pull the product down toward the blade if there's some juice at the bottom. So, all right, these tomatoes will be ready in about a minute. Uh, let's see, and then we need some salt to taste. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple big, big giant pinches of salt for starters. Okay. And then this recipe will be about done. How we're doing on time. All right, good. All right, I think these tomatoes are good to go. I'm going to need something else to get them out of that pan, however. I'm going to use a different kind of spoon here. All right. So I kind of have this like soupy, soupy mixture here. And 
this is a, a pretty industrial blender, so it can handle this amount of heat going in. But you know, if you have the time to kind of let this cool down, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> so it just kind of depends on your blender. But this one I know will be fine. It's accustomed to having hot soups put in it frequently. So <clears throat> I'm going to get this mostly scooped out to a point and then I can pour. Oh, hold on. I wanted to do the food processor with this and not the blender. Sorry, I'm getting, because it's going to chop up my bread a little bit better. So hold on, let me just throw everything. The blender was for the uh, gazpacho. All right, in we go. Give this a little rinse. Okay, sorry about that. Wrong appliance. All right, there's the tomatoes. I want all this yummy juice. All right, and then we have the bread. I'm just gonna give this a quick kind of break it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier for my machine. And last but not least, we have the almonds, toasted, toasted almonds. All right, and I think that is it. Let's give it a quick whirl here just to start breaking everything down. I can feel there's a couple chunks of bread in there that aren't quite letting go, but I think we're, well, that looks pretty good actually. I don't see too many chunks. This is a little soup, the texture is a little soupier than what it usually is, probably because those tomatoes were so juicy. Let me give it one more whirl. There we go, I think I got it all now. I didn't feel any chunks of bread hopping around in the processor. Okay, let me transfer this to a bowl so you can see. See the color. So the consistency is definitely more soupy than pesto. It's like a sauce. Let's see if I can kind of bring it over here. Okay, so, you know, it kind of glops off the spoon. And it, it may thicken as it sits because the juices will continue to, or I should say the bread will continue to absorb the juices. Let me give it a little taste. Yum, that tastes good. Okay, so there's the Romesco sauce. Let me clear a few things here and then we'll move on and finish up the gazpacho. I think I'm done with that pan. Just kind of leave that there. Okay, back to the blender. <laughs> Your kitchen is never big enough, no matter what it is, or it's too big, and then you're walking all over the place. All right. Okay, so here we go. Um, now, what we're going to do, so we've got our rough chopped veggies here, and we have the strained veggies here. So I'm gonna give these a little shake, make sure we got it all out of there. Yeah. I'm kind of stuck to this colander. The roundish one would have worked a little better, I think, because it's like a funnel and the juice would have gone out of it a little easier. Okay, I think I got most of it. Let's set this on top here. So we're just going to give a quick measure and see how much juice we have. Oh, 
Okay, we've got a quarter cup. I think that's what we're supposed to have, actually. Yeah, okay, good. Um, I'm going to transfer the juice to a smaller, shallow bowl because we're going to soak our bread in it. So there's my juice. And then here's, th these are kind of small pieces. So this is, would be, I'd say, a, the equivalent of a piece of sandwich bread. So I'm just going to put these in here, flip them around, let the juice soak it up for a little bit, about a minute. So we've added the bread pieces to the liquid from our garnish vegetables, and they're just going to, you know, soak up some of that juice. And then um, also, if there's any extra juice from our rough chopped ones, we could add it if we needed to, but there's plenty in here for the bread to soak up. I'm going to kind of break these apart. They're going to fit in my bowl better. Okay. So now we're going to start blending, and I don't think this blender is going to hold all of this. So we're going to do it in two parts. So we're going to put um, about half of the soup veggies in here. I'm just going to grab an eyeball. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, you end up with more cucumbers. You know, it doesn't have to be in here in even amounts because it's all going to get put into a big giant bowl at the end. So I'm going to do roughly half of these rough chopped veggies and then I'm also going to put in half of my bread in here. The bread is kind of what makes this um, kind of a creamier gazpacho. Okay and <clears throat> then we're going to drizzle in very slowly the olive oil while the blender is running and that helps to emulsify everything which means that the you know as we know oil and water don't mix but when we add the oil slowly while the water-based ingredients are spinning, then it will combine and emulsify and integrate um, a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to have about a quarter cup. So here's the olive oil I'm using is from Cipe Groves. They have a retail shop in Benicia here in Solano County, and they use a lot of olives from um, up the county near Fairfield and Vacaville. So, and their olive oil um, is kind of known for having really good health benefits. It has high polyphenols, um, which is really good for you. Okay, here's my lid. Okay, so I first just want to give this a little, you know, chop with the blender. Let's see here on. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but so things are mostly chopped and it's looking a little more homogenous and not so chunky. And I just took the little tiny lid part off. So now I'm going to start it again and we're going to do the drizzling up here. And I want to keep it going for probably about a minute or so. Um, and yep, I think that's it. Okay, so we're on. I'll just sing there. Okay, there's round one. This is funny, this, because of those yellow tomatoes, this gazpacho looks kind of yellow. <laughs> you use all red tomatoes, it won't look, be so yellow. All right, round two. And there's a lot of juice from these rough chopped veggies going in too, so um, you want that, all of that yummy stuff. Um, let's see, okay. Oh yeah, the bread part. Okay, so first we'll give it the chop. All right, so that's rough chopped. And then here comes my other quarter cup of olive oil because we needed a half a cup total. 
Um, so the oil I'm using from Cipe Groves, it is their early harvest mission. And here's what it looks like. If anybody wants to check it out sometime. All right, here we go again. I don't want this to explode. All right, I'm going to need a bigger bowl. And I'll transfer it back to this um, glass bowl so you can see. But for right now, just to get everything mixed together, we're going to put it into this bowl. Um, because I have a couple more things to add before this is completely done. So I need to add a little bit of sherry vinegar, um, two tablespoons, and also I'm going to add some herbs and some pepper. Let's see here. I'm going to put this there. This goes here. No, there's really no place to put this. Okay, put it down here. <clears throat> All right, the sherry vinegar. Um, this is just, you know, your standard kind of supermarket vinegar. If you do not have sherry vinegar, you could also use a red wine vinegar. So either, either thing, the sherry would be more typically what they would use in Spain. There's a lot of sherry vinegar that gets used um, in this, these Spanish recipes. And then the herbs that I picked, let's throw that into my big soup bowl here, are some chives. These might even be garlic chives, I'm not sure. You guys hear me crunching? <laughs> okay. So you have a choice now with the soup. If you are doing something like a gazpacho like soup shooter and you wanna put it in like a little shot glass, then you could strain this through a fine mesh strainer. Um, however, you will end up losing you know, some of your solids that are in here, but that is an option because it's a little bit hard to um, drink the soup if it's chunky. So this is pretty smooth though. If you have a good blender, I think, you know, I wouldn't bother straining it really, as long as it gets pureed really, really finely and it's, you know, kind of like liquefied. Okay. Um, then the herbs, you could mix those in now or you could use them as the garnish, up to you. I'm going to go ahead and chop up some of these chives, just a few. Kind of have, I think I'm going to do the herbs like a garnish. I have a little bit of basil here as well. Another option that would be good is parsley. Okay. All right. Okay, so the vinegar goes in to the soup, and then I'm also going to add a little more salt and pepper. I haven't added any pepper yet, so let's put that in. And then at this point, you want to give it a taste, but you also kind of have to know that it's not your final product in terms of taste because ideally you want this to sit in your fridge overnight. The flavors will blend really well. It'll taste better the next day as do many soups after you let them sit. Um, so you know you can check the salt. That needs more salt. If you don't taste the tomatoes clearly and all the other goodies and you probably need to add more salt. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that it's sat in the fridge now and we will just dish some up and put our garnishes on. The other option that you have too is if you're serving this is do you wanna go ahead and stir all of these garnishes in and make it a chunky gazpacho or do we want to just sprinkle some on top? So I'm gonna opt with the sprinkling option right now. And then other things that you can add are a little bit extra vinegar and or a little bit more olive oil. Maybe some herbs, my chives. 
a little bit of basil. Okay. All right. So essentially, you know, once you get it all done, then just depending on how you want to serve it, you know, you can either combine things or just sprinkle things or whatever you want to do. Let's try this down. So there's the gazpacho. Look how yellow it is. Isn't that crazy? From all those yellow tomatoes I had. 